One of the most wonderful things about video games is the amount of unique experiences that you can have in them. A million people could play the same game, and chances are they'd all have a different special moment to talk about when asked about what they played. But this silver lining does carry a cloud. Because games are made to let players have unique experiences, this also means it's quite easy to miss some of them, meaning you can inadvertently sail past some of the most individual and wonderful portions of the entire adventure. You can even accidentally skip entire games this way. Although, mercifully, it's not something that you can do very often. I am Kirsten from What Culture, and these are 9 incredible parts of video games you can easily miss. Number 9. Thames Wharf, Tomb Raider 3 Thames Wharf is undeniably one of the most visually interesting levels in Tomb Raider 3, taking you across rooftops of London in some absolutely beautifully lit scenes. However, it's not exactly a short section of the game, as most playthroughs of this particular area take between 50 minutes to an hour to complete. That is, if you don't just decide to skip the underground section of this part by jumping from one roof to another. You know, like pretty much everyone would presume they were supposed to do. So there are likely a huge number of people who played the game, and possibly this section multiple times but never see the whole thing. That said, knowing a risky rooftop leap of faith managed to skip half the level is likely to make you feel just a little bit more badass for having done it. Although the underground section is pretty cool, it can be argued it makes a worthy sacrifice in order for your roof hopping shenanigans to seem just that bit cooler. Number 8. The Cleric Beast Bloodborne Given that for most players it's the first boss that they fight, it's likely pretty hugely surprising that a good portion of first time plays may have missed the Cleric Beast entirely. After all, while it's one of two bosses in the first area you're put in, it's an entirely optional one, since there is no path revealed after beating the bony bad boy. As such, if you find the other route first, beating the blood addled half beast father Gascoigne, you're likely to not search the area further, as you've places to go and monsters to be killed by. This is especially unfortunate because killing the cleric beast gives you the sword hunter badge, which unlocks a series of items in the shop that you find in the hunter's dream. Amongst a bunch of useful weapons, this also unlocks the hunter chief emblem, which unlocks the door to Vicar Amelia, who is not an optional boss. So how would a player still not find the cleric beast? Well, the hunter chief emblem is not needed to get to Amelia, but it is the easier way. Instead, you need to find a secret route that leads you to either a hidden area or to the Vicar boss fight. Hopefully at this point you've googled enough to realise that you've missed a boss though, because this one you don't want to miss. Number 7. The First Assassination Quest – Assassin's Creed Origins With its luscious open world and a huge assortment of side missions and things to do, it's easy to forget sometimes that Assassin's Creed Origins even has a main story. But it does indeed, and interestingly, one that you can accidentally solve components of without even realising you're about to. This means that you can assassinate some targets from the main mission without even doing most of the quest involving them, as exploring and fighting in certain areas can mean you you kill a guy you weren't supposed to quite yet. This is especially annoying for those who do it with the first proper assassination target, as you haven't quite yet had time to learn how the assassinations work, and it basically skips the part of the game where you get gently taught how to do them. This has actually aggravated plenty of players, who are understandably annoyed that this free roam game inadvertently punishes you for wanting to fully explore it before carrying out the main missions. While saving regularly is a good idea to counter this, it's wild to think that you could miss the joy of hunting one of the enemies down properly because you accidentally stabbed him on a sneaky jaunt to free some prisoners and get some loot. Number 6. Getting the Secret Code Maniac Mansion Maniac Mansion manages that ancient art of an older game having puzzles that seem simply impenetrable. When you discover that this game has a sealed lab entrance that has a number code to unlock it, it seems that you're facing up against yet another one of these. And so you'd go through all sorts of tasks in order to finally obtain this code, which varied in difficulty from fixing some broken wires to getting a high score on an arcade game in order to use whatever score you got to unlock the door. However, the door still has a code before it's set to whatever sweet score you manage to get. Hilariously, said code is incredibly easy to guess. 0000. Although this is especially painful to learn after basically going through the 12 labours of Hercules, it's undeniably funny to learn that you could have dodged all of this by just guessing the first few codes that could come to your mind. 
Number five, the headless, Sekiro. In Sekiro, your goal more often than not is to defeat bosses. Dragon bosses, ape bosses, mini bosses. No matter what you're fighting, the fights you'll tend to die in will be the bosses, and thus their defeat your biggest goal. Only some bosses you don't need to defeat even once, even if you want to 100% the game. These come in two categories, the Shichimen Warriors and the Headless. While both are optional mini bosses that don't give you the prayer beads you need to upgrade health and stamina, and thus are need for a trophy, the Shichimen Warriors are slightly more likely to face your wrath because they drop totally unique items. The Headless, however, many are sure to actively avoid fighting whatsoever. This is because fighting them is totally different to anything else in the game, as being near the Headless slows time down, meaning your parry and attack windows require totally different timing and tactics to any other battle. It makes sense that you don't have to kill each of the five headless, as except for the underwater battle, they play largely the same. But it does feel undeniably strange that From Software created an entirely unique type of fight and then made it so that you can get the platinum trophy without so much as looking at one of the beheaded beastie boys. Number four, most areas. Fallout 3. As much as you want to try and create a specific build in RPGs like the Fallout series, there are some skills that are more valuable than others. While combat skills are undeniably valuable, the ability to lockpick actually comes with some greater advantages, at the price of you possibly missing out on portions of the game. Because most exits to caves, buildings and even vaults are sealed away with the highest level locks. This means should you have a high enough lockpick skill, you can get into basically everywhere through the exit that you are meant to leave the area through. This is fantastic if you're solely in it for the rewards, as you can pilfer the best goods left at the end of the level without having to traipse through it. However, it can actually be annoying if you're trying to play through these places normally, as you can often accidentally end up at the end of the area when you meant to be at the start. Number 3. Most of the Sky Sanctuary Zone Sonic the Hedgehog 3 the Sky Sanctuary Zone is a beautiful and decently challenging area of Sonic 3, or Sonic and Knuckles, depending on how you live. It does, however, hold one secret that also, coincidentally, makes the whole thing way less hard. Tails can fly over most of it. Use this ability to stay up in the air and you can happily cruise your way to the level's end while bypassing the vast majority of obstacles in your way. Hilariously, this involves skipping two of the area's three boss fights through the ancient art of simply sailing cleanly over them. It's definitely not a method the developers intended you to use, but when it's as easy and graceful as just flying at the top of the screen, you can't exactly argue with anyone who used this technique to complete the zone. Number 2. The Haunted Cathedral Escape – Thief – The Dark Project Mission 6 follows the great trend of every Thief game having at least one incredibly spooky level. The way the mission is intended to go is that you sneak into a deserted cathedral in order to procure a gem called the Eye that is said to be inside. Only it turns out that the rumours about the place being haunted are very much true, and you are then trapped inside the cathedral with a surprising number of angry undead, forced to try and escape through the building's crypts. However, some savvy players devised a way around this entrapment. If you wedged an object in the doorways, they'd remain jammed open when they were supposed to be magically sealed shut, meaning that you could sneak back out through these gaps and skip a good portion of the mission. This sneaky route was fixed in Thief Gold, the expanded version of the game that was released a year later. Number 1. The Whole Game Gone Home Gone Home is a story that involves you walking around and searching things in order to continue the story to progress, as basically a 3D point-and-click adventure more or less. However, unlike similar games such as Firewatch or What Remains of Edith Finch, reception to Gone Home was decidedly mixed, as many felt the game's story was too loose for most of the game and then resolved too easily. And things only got more heated when it was revealed that you could actually beat this whole game in about two minutes by finding the hidden key to the final room of the game, which you can literally accidentally find in about 10 minutes if you're thorough enough at searching an area. While it's understandable that this secret was placed here, as presumably the creators thought that it would stay hidden under the later reveal. However, it's also understandable that this irritated people as it made the entire legitimately interesting story feel way cheaper, because you could have missed all of it in the first place. And that's our list. Were you aware of any of these little sneaky things that you could have missed in video games? If you weren't, then leave us a comment down below and let us know. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, click that subscribe button. But for now, I have been Kirsten from What Culture, and I will see you in the next video.